the dirt on Tulsa. You got it. Hey everyone, welcome to Tulsa Music Stream. It is July 21st, 21, right? It is. Um, yeah. <laughs> you it ain't is. lying. Happy, no. happy summer. It's happy right? Jizzy Day. It is. <laughs> we're going to have Jizzy Pearl on today. Um, yes. We're also going to be talking to Doug Burgess, and we're going to talk about the uh, epic uh, concert he has on July 24th at the IDL Ballroom. It's yes. going to be the last rock concert there. Yep. Um, it's going to have Phil Lewis. Um, Sebastian Bach and um, Rat Singer. Shit, Stephen Piercy. Yeah. 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 You're nervous. Yeah. It's okay. I'm not nervous at all. Shaking it's off the nerves. Sure he is. No, I don't think that's the last rock show. I it's think the last national rock it's show. We're the last rock show. Local. Right. right. Nas- national. Uh, I'm, just, I'm not. Sp- I know. said concert, I think. Who's, I don't know. Who's bringing the saw so I can take part of the stage on my way out? Uh, you? I got a screwdriver. It's not me. Jigsaw. We need a we need a jizzy saw. So yeah, jizzy pearl tonight. Yes. Man. What this guy's been around the block. I mean, seriously, man, he's got some stories. He's got books. He's got music. He's got a lot of shit, man. Yeah. So please uh, make sure you share our stream. We are the Tulsa Music Stream, and we are on YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch, yeah. and of course Facebook Live, and just share them to all your favorite pages, all your favorite groups. And we want to say thank you for everyone who's joining us right now. We're going to be giving away two tickets to the concert we just mentioned before. Thanks, Jamie Hooper, Chris Kennedy, Leslie, um, Sherry Smith, um, Jason Elliott. Thank you guys for all being here. I appreciate it. Now, listen, I, I got to Someone's already trying to pee in our Wheaties, and, and I'm having none of it. Jason, I'm sure you're a very nice guy. Thank you for joining the stream. We're proud of our intro song. It, it's not metal. But it's very, uh, it was done by Doug Weber, who is our bassist and we love. And it's, it's great. Yeah. So just make it work. Yep. <laughs> make it work for yourself. Make it work. We love it. We love it. It's very melodic. And we're proud of it. Yep. Anyway, so you can go to our Twitch page or, and our Twitter page. And if you guys would rather um, go off of those platforms, we'd appreciate it. And make sure you can share and um, on those platforms as well. Um, we have some really cool stuff we gonna be doing tonight um we'll be talking to doug about a lot of different things especially his new stage that he's Mm -hmm. gonna be doing some outdoor concerts with and um we'll be talking to jizzy about all things quiet riot all things love hate just it's gonna be a cool show so stick around and um let your friends know and they can come in here and win some tickets to the stephen piercy sebastian bach and Phil Lewis show at the IDL. That's this Saturday night, right? Yes. Yes, this Saturday night. Who wants to give the shout-out? If you already did, please forgive me because I've been a little distracted, but who wants to give the shout-out to our new friend from Melbourne, Australia? Well, his name is Peter. Man, I I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it right. Tazagazones. There you go. And he says, hi, Jizzy from Melbourne, Australia. Hello, mate. That's killer. Tazagazones. Peter T. Let's just go with that. Thank you for tuning in tonight, Peter. We appreciate that a lot. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. So, like the like the guy said, we have a cool show lined up tonight, and um, man, it's action packed for the next few weeks. We're actually going to be back on again this Sunday, and we know we'll be talking about that show that's going to happen Saturday night. But we're also we've actually added a third guest. We didn't expect we were going to do this, but we have tried. We're attempting to reschedule Chips enough for Sunday night at six o'clock our time. After him, we're going to talk to Greg Chasen of Badlands uh, and Atomic Kings and Jeff Shield from Gravity Kill. So that's going to be really cool. So make sure when you guys are recovering Sunday at your homes with your slippers on your feet, make sure you tune into Tulsa Music Stream at 6 o'clock Central this Sunday night for another great episode. We've got a bunch more cool stuff coming up. We'll talk about that at the end of the show. Don't forget what Scott said, too. Uh, our ticket giveaway tonight It's going to be at the end of the show two tickets to this Saturday's Farewell to IDL show, courtesy of Marty Overby from Tulsa Band's Bulletin Board. It's a Skid Row trivia song, and we're going to make you guys call in, um, and we'll put the number up on the screen, and we'll give it to you. We're going to make you call in and give the correct answer, and then we'll hook you up with Marty so you can figure out how to get those tickets for yourself, but um, super cool. Marty, let us know, you know, those tickets, and we know this ourselves, those tickets 
aren't cheap. So this is a pretty good giveaway. So make sure you yeah. tune in. And if you guys are, are watching on YouTube, just go ahead and hit subscribe. And all of you that are even watching on Facebook, hit your notification. Share it. So, so share everything, it. you know, when we go live, you'll get the notification. So absolutely, it's always uh, it always helps. And and as well, keep sharing because the more you share, the more people can see our stream. Why don't you guys? We want. we want our numbers to grow. Talk a, a couple more minutes. I'm going to go ahead and kick off kick off the Zoom meeting, and then we'll get uh, we will get Jizzy in here just as soon as he being recorded yes. all right as soon as he wants to join Do you know that peter said that i got it right he said spot on so spot I'm proud on. of you yeah and proud of you so, um Teresa from tulsa says push the fucking buttons hey i've got it okay <laughs> sister i got you i oh that's funny i i know okay jizzy is already ready to go let's get him in here right on uh, i do want to do one thing real quick okay he now we got to remember we had his guitar player Alex on, what, a month ago? Yeah, there he is. Yeah, so he's he's coming in as we speak, getting ready to uh, get his audio going. Hello, Mr. Pearl, how you doing? Jizzy. Good, I'm doing good. Hello. Fantastic. Hello from Tulsa. Look, looking like shit as usual. <laughs> good. No. Well, no, you look like you're supposed to. Now, a rock star. Yeah, I've seen you probably numerous times that you've played here in Oklahoma, and you never look like shit, man. Never. You're always ready to rock and always ready to go. You know, uh, isn't Kane's Ballroom in Tulsa? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Historic Kane's Ballroom. ballroom. Yeah, yeah. I think you did the uh, a, a rat a show there, and I actually was a couple. A, couple yeah, of rats. I actually had the opportunity to open up for one of those, so that was pretty cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that place is killer. Very yeah. cool All those that you huge remember that. portraits of the country people, and yeah, and then you, you take a walk around, and, and all the crackheads. It's like Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> did they show you? Did they show you when you were there the uh, Sid Vicious's uh, fist mark through the wall? <laughs> you know, I don't remember. I don't remember. That's it was cool just to, it, cool. It's to just a classic place. place. You know what I mean? Definitely. It's just a classic place. I I, I, I dug that. Yeah, Definitely. it's funny. Cool. Well, we're, it's a pleasure for you to be here with us on the Tulsa Music Stream, and um, I know you got a lot on your plate. You got um, all your Quiet Right shows that you got going on. I believe you got something coming on July 31st, uh, Rock the Block in Ohio. How's the how's yeah. the how's the tour going? How's the uh, the crowd are responding to you guys? Well, you know, I think everybody. <clears throat> I I think I can speak for everybody, musicians and audiences alike that it's just nice to be able to go out and see a rock show yes you know yeah. after being locked down for a year or so uh, i get that we played in uh fargo last week and uh it was five or six seven thousand people it was it was wow. really nuts it was crazy it was good 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 well uh, we're going to talk some about your musical endeavors and then we're going to get into your passion and your talent for for writing books we appreciate you sending us unhappy endings it's an amazing read we're gonna oh we've got a cat visitor here <laughs> say hi to our cat jizzy hey, buddy. that's vincent sorry about that anyway we're going to get into your your books and and uh, how fantastic they are and congratulations by the way on selling out of your your first book i've you know it's just well um, go ahead yeah you know it's 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 nice i mean the, the whole reason for reissuing the books was partly because people have been asking me for years to do it and i've been hesitant um because of the cost sure. you know what i mean and uh but i just figured with the lockdown and stuff like that i just figured screw it i was gonna i was gonna you know take the plunge and uh i'm, I'm happy to say that they are selling it's it's nice to be able to uh you know so sell, sell books mm -hmm. sell it's, anything. Fu it's funny when you sent when you sent it to us we we talked and we we're like all right well how about you take chapters one through this and i'll take this and, nice. and so I, I started reading my chapters one through nine and i never put it down i was yeah. like holy shit this yeah. is kill this is killer and as a matter of fact i read it for the second time today so i was i, I it's not what i expected and it was totally i mean it was it was there were some stephen king elements to it even i was it was really cool it I was, it, was it. it was like stephen king in hollywood california you know it was, it was like he was on well, sunset boulevard yeah i mean i, I kind of 
it's the book is the books are kind of like that. They're 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 sort of Hollywood sunset strip trash talk, um, along with heap and helping of graphic violence, and um, and some grodiness. I mean, maybe some stories aren't fit for the ladies. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> <laughs> unless unless they're part of the Platinum of, Club. Yeah. Oh, you like that one? That was, that was a good one. Yeah, that yeah. was good. Yeah, that's taken, I guess, loosely based on people that used to hang out at the Rainbow. So it's, I would say, it's semi true in that those kind of girls do exist. You know what I mean? On the fringes of the the Rainbow Hollywood scene you know what i mean just as much a part as the musicians you know what i mean there's 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 the uh the uh the hangers on and the the people that party with you you know what i mean so they're celebrities in themselves i guess yeah you know, we we sort of wanted to ask you about you know how some truth that was in a lot of those chapters that were kind of how you felt or things that you've seen or things that you've kind of dealt with in in your past I mean, what would you say, like, some of those that you've kind of actually really dealt with, you know? Like, meaning well, what percentage be, of that book is tr is actually true? Um, well, uh, be specific. Ask me about a certain thing, and I'll tell you. Okay. Uh, my favorite chapter was jealousy, and I because— That's I, I, true. Is <laughs> wow. it Okay. That's crazy. Yeah, I love that because I, I can relate to that. But then I was expecting it to resolve at the end, and it didn't, and I— I laughed out loud with just how, how well, you ended the chapter. <laughs> I mean, j just for, for your listeners, basically, um, when I was a kid, I used to be in a garage band and be best friends with, with this guy. And um, what happened was uh, I made it and he didn't. And we sort of lost touch. And I called him up out of the blue when I my first record came out and I met him and uh, we sort of hung out and, and, you know, at first everything was nice and cool. We talked about the past and our friendship and whatnot, but then sort of his jealousy came over, you know, after we had drank a bunch mm -hmm. of booze, he kind of lost it a little bit. And, um, and it was obvious that he didn't, you know what I mean? He was, he was just, I made it and he didn't and he was a dick right. you know what I mean and and uh so that's kind of how the story ends he, with him still being a dick and I take it you have never spoken to him because that book was written in 2011 correct yeah I I there was no need to right I mean uh, would you but it made a good story you know what I mean that's the sure, thing sure is did. a lot of because as a musician I grew up with other guys that were musicians and Obviously, I mean, I'm the only one out of my group that ever really did anything. You know what I mean? We all sort of played backyard parties and and whatnot, but I was the only one that ever sort of graduated mm -hmm. to, you know, whatever you want to call it, making records and, and, and being a professional and whatnot. And so, yeah, it's it's a weird thing to be the, the one guy out of your whole circle of friends that sort of... Uh, and you know, and 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 when you do, you, you sort of don't want to throw it in people's faces when right. you see them. You know, how's it going? Well, I'm playing with ACDC down the street. What are you doing? Right. You know? Sure. Sure. Well, you you definitely have a creative mind. Yes, and, you do. Um, you know, uh, some of those things like how how you felt about you know dog urine in the carpet and things like that. I mean, I just for some reason I just I felt like I bet he's really talking about some inside issues he's got as far as cleanliness and, you know, germ phobe and stuff like that. And I was like, I bet there's a little bit of truth of that. Well, you know, I, I think you're talking about the story where I talk about the dog, the, 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 bat, the, the dread. Well, the roommate, uh, right? The roommate. Oh, oh yeah. I knew a guy like that. That, that, <laughs> no, this that, was the girl kind of OCD that way. Oh, right? gotcha, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Had to have all the, had to have all the cans of vegetables oh, wow. in his pantry turned towards him and all dated and all, <laughs> you know what I mean? One of those kind of guys, you know, that, that opened the door with the tissue, kind of like Howard Hughes, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Well, let's yeah, get back. Yeah, there's guys. Go ahead. No, I know. We are going to speak. And, um, 
he did, I think, a half dozen shows with us before he couldn't do any more shows. And those were um, pretty awesome because he had a whole different, he wasn't the victim. He wasn't playing the victim. He was, he had a, a real uh, schwa de vie, you know, like a lust for life. And he was nice and it was hugs and kisses and it was, it was all positive. And, you know, it was, it was great for us to have that with him for those last few gigs and stuff like that. So, uh, that's what I remember. And then obviously, you know, he got sick and, and, and didn't make it, but, uh, but at least we got to spend those last few, you know, experiences with him. And it was you, great. Uh, we had your guitar player, Alex on about a month ago. And, and he said that, you know, Frankie was obviously sick, but when he got on those drums, it was like, there was nothing wrong with him at all. And that, well, that that's the weird part about it about cancer in general um is that it tricks you uh, eaten by sharks because he had just seen jaws you know what i mean mm -hmm. and that and it, it terrified him so much that he would never go in the water again and uh another guy maybe burned alive like the witches were you know back in the middle ages and and etc cetera, etc cetera. and um and that story started that way and then of course it, it it resolved itself in a grisly way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It did, it did. As, yeah. uh, as my stories tend to do. Yeah, I think a lot of people think my book is, is your typical rock book. Uh, rock guy speaks into a tape recorder and tells everybody about when the band was formed and we did our first gig at this place and then we, we got our record deal and, and, and you know, along the way we drank a bunch of beer and humped a bunch of chicks you know what i mean it, it <laughs> it's it's not like that at all it's more it's a it's half and half it's half sunset strip visualization what was it like during the 80s what was it like on the sunset strip you know and i tell people about that and then it's also kind of that twilight zone black mirror fiction that that I dig, you know what I mean, being a reader sure. myself. So sure. it's it's sort of a bit of both. I think for Scott and, and myself, we were kids. We were products of 1970, 1971. So we lived, we lived, you know, of course we were into all the bands of the L.A. scene in the mid-80s and the late 80s. And, but we, we had to live it here in the Midwest through Hit Prater and Circus and Metal Edge and stuff like that, right. you know. But uh, you saw it all, man. You were, you, you were there front row for so much of it um what was it like for you in the uh, sunset strip 1980s well you know i i used to go uh to the troubadour and Cazares when it was open uh as a kid and just kind of hang out and everyone was dressed up because i was from the san fernando valley mm -hmm. so i was sort of conservative and i and i didn't I mean, the idea of dressing up like Nikki Six in the Live Wire video would mm -hmm. not even be, a, you know, a, a thing for me then, until I realized that that was that world was where it was at. You know what I mean? Sure, when I joined absolutely. Love Hate, and we first started, we were we were kind of like the cult. We weren't like Guns N' Roses. We weren't like uh, Rat or Quiet Riot. We were sort of like an English band, you know what I mean? I even had a fake English accent. I was such a poser. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, but the cult, that love record and electric. Sure. Yeah, were those just, great albums. Those were iconic records for us. And so we sort of, and then we started playing on the strip and seeing and being influenced by you know, LA Guns and Faster Pussycat. I mean, you you can't help but be influenced by everything around you. And it was so alive and so uh, electric and energetic that you just, you naturally start to incline your writing and the way you are towards towards what you think is cool. Mm -hmm. And GNR was, was they were the first band to sort of get signed in our little genre uh -huh. and then faster got signed and then la guns got signed and it was a real 
vibrant scene. I mean, it's not, you can't explain to people now what it was like then because there was no internet and it was just flyering and networking. You, you, you helped your, you, you, you went out every night, you hung out on the strip every night. And that's how you sort of networked your band because there was no internet. And, um, luckily but people were getting, for some of you. well, but, pe but people were getting record deals and it was a real thing. It's not like it is now. It's just, I don't know if people do get record deals or it's not the same thing. Right. They start but their own back companies. then, back then, I mean, it was, I liken it to Willy Wonka's golden tickets. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, because it was very real. And all of a sudden you'd hear, Oh, LA guns got signed you know, through the grapevine and fuck, you're thinking one more golden ticket. There's only four more left, mm. only mm. four more left. And then I tell the story when junkyard got signed, I thought there were no more golden tickets. And I just, I lost it because I figured, well, that's it. Now, what am I going to do? Work mm. at home Depot. You know what I mean? I'm <laughs> fucked, you know? And then it just, when it seemed darkest before the dawn, we started playing the whiskey and got to be sort of a house band there and um, got a following. And we made a four track demo tape that started circulating, which was basically Blackout in the Red Room record, right. but it was on four track, but it sounded great, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, you'd know, you go to parties and you would hear your music on cassette yeah. in the party. And so, you know what I mean? It was It was like a, the twenty thousand dollar pyramid. I mean, little things started to add up. You start to get a following. You start to people from record companies start to sniff around. You know what I mean? Because they all wanted their own Guns and Roses. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's just face it. Every record company wants what's successful. And when GNR blew up, that's when the record companies started to to you know, well, that guy wears bandanas. Let's mm -hmm. sign him. You know. Mm -hmm. That guy has cool cats. Let's sign him. Mm -hmm. right. So, I mean, it, as silly as that sounds, but to, to we ended me, up getting a record deal really based on the music and being at the right place at the right time, right. for sure. Right. You, you guys definitely had a unique sound. I mean, to me, it was almost, you know, you had a lot of different influences from, I mean, it's like the extreme sound to... To, to bang tango to guns and roses it was just a mixed bag of a lot of different influences with you guys and, and it's almost like you can't tell if you guys were ahead of your time or or or, or you know before well your time. we were influenced we were influenced by the chilies the chili yeah. peppers mm -hmm. definitely Jane's in there addiction. jane's addiction for sure yep i mean you know i considered jane's addiction to be metal i mean when you hear ocean size or right. mountain song that's a great. I mean, that's album. metal to me. Yes. Pigs and Zen. That's fucking metal. That sounds like old Black Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So, I was listening to their demos before they ever made it, and <laughs> and I was I would go to their gigs and just go, God, these guys are unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just they're just unbelievable. You know, they're all fucked up and and huge and 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 they were great. And GNR, of course, was amazing too. They were, they just didn't give a fuck. And that's right. probably what helped them. And so I just thought, well, if not giving a fuck is the way to success, then I'll just not give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. It worked. You know? Hey, I want to ask you about, uh, there was an interview, I don't know how old it is, done with producer Tom Warman. And he discussed uh, with the interviewer that he basically found you guys and that he wanted to sign you as an independent artist and then go get your record deal but then apparently Columbia Records kind of went around him and grabbed you guys and gave you this big advance for your debut album. If you like could, like eight hundred thousand yeah, dollars or something. Yeah, like I mean, that. It, it was a lot. We know. If you could go back in time, do well, you, do you wish you would have signed with Mormon? It was eight hundred. In advance, it or was eight hundred thousand dollars. Right. Over the course of seven records. Oh. Do you understand? Okay. okay. So it sounds like oh they got a million. It was a million dollar record deal, but course of years and years and years it wasn't they didn't just hand us a million dollars okay okay here you go yeah the way you know he I mean? makes it, it sound is like companies the way he makes it sound record is that, companies that, don't work that way dude. gotcha, gotcha. They, record companies don't work that way you know what i mean 
We mm -hmm. got two guaranteed records, which was great. And what happened with Worman was that we started to get a little popular and people start sniffing around. Like I said, record companies, producers, A&R guys, lawyers, you know, lawyers were courting us because lawyers are the people that mm. get the deal for you. They, they sort of, you know, make it happen when on paper, you know what I mean? Yeah. When it comes down to the final thing, you want a good lawyer because those little sentences and little paragraphs mean a lot, you know, a year later, mm -hmm. you don't realize it, you know, but, but you need a good lawyer for that kind of stuff. And, and, uh, and, you know, but with Worman, um, he wanted to sign us to a production deal to his company. Yeah. And so he brought us over to his house and, and took us to his uh, room of gold and platinum records. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which were, you know, he, I think he had his maid go and polish them all up. <laughs> right so, before you got there. Yeah, because <laughs> when we went in there, it Shiny. was blinding. <laughs> um, and and it's true story that he was friends with of, uh, this guy, Ron Oberman, at Columbia Records. And he goes, I'm going on a two-week vacation. Whatever you do, don't sign these guys. Mm. And so, of course, they did the opposite. They oh went. Oh, my gosh. They went to the whiskey. And, uh, and uh, it's a funny story. You know, we did our gig just like a normal gig, you know, at the whiskey. And then it, it, it was a huge dressing room upstairs. They, they weren't segmented like it is now. And every band sort of picked out a corner and kind of were doing their hair and you know what I mean, in, in a corner. And so there were maybe seven bands in this one big room. And I finished my gig and I'm upstairs, you know, drinking a beer, just getting, you know, coming down. And this guy taps me on the shoulder and he looks like um, he looks like the school librarian, you know, <laughs> and with glasses, kind of nerdy. And I and he goes, oh, it was a really good gig. And I go, well, thanks. And he goes, I'm Ron Oberman from Columbia Records. And you could have heard a pin drop in the room. Oh, geez. Everyone in the room just was silent wow. because, you know, it was like that commercial when when you could hear a pin drop, you could hear a pin drop, and mm -hmm. uh, and I I thanked him and he goes he goes we'll talk soon and he left, and I and and that was it and then about three days later, they called and and uh, got us we got the record deal so uh, wow. but you know you one got of those your golden ticket moments, yeah. one of those pivotal moments in your life sure Definitely. sure for sure. We're yeah, sorry if we're still freezing up on you there, Jizzy. Um, I don't know how that's coming through on your end, but so then everything changed for you. You got your gold, you got your golden ticket, and uh, so your your yes, your, your debut album, uh, Blackout in the Red Room, came out, and I believe it was uh, 1990. 90. Yeah, 1990. 90. And then you guys uh, started opening for Dio and for. Uh, ACDC eventually in the arenas, man. I mean, that's that had to have been a thrill for you, I'm sure. As a kid, you probably, uh, yeah, probably was. I mean, your you goal know, was to do that. It's like, like it's like climbing a mountain, basically. You know. Well, you don't realize it at the time how lucky you are. You just you don't. You know what I mean? You just the 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 thing about getting a record deal is that you think that now you've made it and now you're 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 top tier you know what i mean like this is what's supposed to happen i make videos i i live in a mansion you know what i mean you just you you don't realize that that there's more to it that once you sign that record deal it's it's a faustian bargain if if you know what i mean they own you now. um but yeah being on a bus was great and, and drinking for free and and being on stage and opening for Dio, who is obviously one of my idols mm -hmm. from Absolutely. years and years ago. I mean, but how do you tell a guy like him? You know, I used to sing to your records, man. I, you know what I mean? I kill the King, you know, rainbow. I used to sing to all your records and he's just, he's heard it all before, you know, there's been a hundred jizzies clawing at his clothing. <laughs> 
you know, sure, because sure. he's he's one of the few, you know, him and Robert Plant and Roger Daltrey and, you know, uh, Rob Halford. I mean, there's there's only a couple at the very top of Mount Olympus right. and he was one of them. So, uh, yeah, it was great. And then ACDC playing, you know, the big places and and then we we got huge in England, you know, for some reason they really dug us. And so that was crazy being able to play over there and, and be extremely popular and, and it was great. You know what I mean? It was awesome. Sure. So you were named uh, what n- number 20 in Rolling Stones top 50 greatest hair metal albums. How do you feel about that? <laughs> number 20. Cause I don't, <laughs> I don't consider you guys even a hair metal. I don't either. I mean, well, you guys were more hard, heavy, you know, more heavy rock, but I, you know, I guess I, I think it's killer that I'm recognized. See, sure. my the thing about my band is that we never sold millions of records, but which would have been awesome, but I probably would have fucked away all the money anyway. Hmm. Um, but we we have this uh, following of, of people that dig the music. I mean, I'm talking friends and bands like Warrant were huge Love Hate fans. Firehouse were huge Love Hate fans. Hmm. Um, only later on when I toured with these guys when I was in LA Guns and Rat and stuff like that did I really find out that these guys used to play my record on their bus in the 90s you know what I mean that's cool That's awesome. And, uh, yeah so I mean those records that music that I made last the test of time and I mean I, it, it, it still is great music so that's cool you know what I mean? I mean that that's something that I have that 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 uh, that is cool, and so I get to have that, and I get to, I mean, for the last thirty years, I've sort of been, you know, bouncing around and playing in different bands, and uh, you know, still keeping the lights on. So that's that's cool too. It's it's good that uh, I mean, if it makes you happy, you know, you know, you continue doing what makes you happy. Well, it's work, dude. I mean, it's work. I mean, it's not. There's nothing wrong with, you know, working and being a musician. I mean, that's just if my band had sold millions of records, maybe I'd still be doing, you know, love, hate primarily, but it didn't. And so I can't, you know, do what I want to do with that thing. So I'll play in a band that sold 15 million records. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, not not good enough for me. The the first time I ever actually got to talk to you, and this was years ago, and I'm going to say it's probably around year 2000 to maybe 2001. It was the Rock Never Stops tour when you were uh, with L.A. Guns. And um, it was you and Tracy, and you guys were actually in a a bar called The Brink in Tulsa. And I think it it rained. You guys were supposed to all go outside, and it was Quiet Riot, and you guys, and uh, there was a few other bands. But anyway... Um, that was your first stint with LA Guns. Tell me a little, a little bit about being in LA Guns. I mean, you certainly have a similarity of voice that Phil Lewis has. So, you know, listen to Love Hate. You know, we can see why it was an obvious choice for you to be in that band. Well, one of the reasons that I'm sort of the go-to guy when it comes to, to, you know, being the singer is that in this small rock community um there's a couple of guys that if you know you call them can you learn 15 songs in a week can you get on a plane can you not fuck up can you do the gig and you know there's money involved and you know so it it becomes you know i'm 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 like that one of those ninja guys that can step in and i don't know if i sound like phil lewis i don't know if i sound like kevin dubrow i just do the best i can with the music and sing the best i can and a lot of those songs are especially the qr songs you know are pretty fucking hard to yeah. sing yeah definitely he sang high yeah <laughs> and he was he was a great singer i mean he was he was amazing singer you know what I mean? In that um, humble pie, Rod Stewart in the faces tradition. You know what I mean? That's right. he had that kind of raspy charm 
and uh, no yeah, and the songs aren't easy. So you need a guy that's going to go in and, and step on the stage of M3 and, and um, you know, take control. So, sure, and deliver. You know, I, I was watching some videos, and there's a lot of guys that did it in the 80s that never really put any thought to, hey, maybe in 30 years we're going to have a reunion and I'm not going to be able to sing any of these songs. because. But I was watching videos of you, and you're still, you still you seem to have no issues at all hitting the notes, singing the songs. You, what, do you have special things that you do for warm-ups? Do you, how, how do you take care of your voice? I just... Uh... I just do it any, I, I, I treat it like an athletic thing, you know what I mean? And that, that means jogging and, and getting a lot of, you know, sleep. And, 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 and again, I mean, back in the day, you could, you know, like the slaughter, like the slaughter song says, you could be up all night, sleep all day. <laughs> right, you're right. But when you're, you know, older, you can't do that anymore. So you have to recognize that you're that you're not, you know, in your 20s anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess I just, you know, I do what I do and 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 and, uh, and do the best I can. Right. right. We well, do a hell of a job, man. Yes, you do. I, that, that was a great show. And, 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 you know, what's funny about that was Kevin was, you know, singing you know on that tour so i got to see you and, and little did you know that you you know you were going to be part of that band and um it's just it's it's weird how just you know time just develops and things just change and go it your is way, weird you know it is weird i mean i knew la guns before my first record came out i knew all those guys i remember being at the whiskey one night and uh their roadie came up to me and goes we're gonna get this new guy singing He's a star. He's from England. His name is Phil Lewis. Yeah. Wow. I mean, <laughs> right. You know, I knew all those guys. Tracy and I knew each other back then, and I never thought that I would be singing in LA Guns. I mean, it's just, but it's just, it's weird. You know, the 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 clocks ticking and the and the gears turning at just the right time. And then I got into Rat, you know, and I did that for a while. And 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 again, I mean, I I remember seeing those guys at the Troubadour back when I was, you know, before I ever had pubic hair, you know, and so <laughs> I remember, but you know, and then I'm all sudden I'm in rat and I'm, I'm headlining 10,000 seaters, you know, on rock never stops tour. So, I mean, it's just, you just have to take it all in stride and, and not, and, and, and realize that it's, it's work and it's a gig and you have to take it seriously. I, I just think maybe guys sometimes you know don't realize that youtube is a is a it can be good news and bad news yeah mm -hmm. sure right you know it That's... can be you can do a you can do a video and you can go fuck this is killer i'm so happy someone took this video or you can be fuck i want to kill myself oh yeah we as <laughs> so... musicians for sure know that absolutely <laughs> Absolutely. So you probably get asked about it a lot. You know, we know, we know the story of the Hollywood sign, but for our listeners who do not, this is an outrageous, outrageous story. Um, do you want to fill in our listen listeners about that uh, that the day arrow. in 1992? That looks scary. And isn't it crazy? It's shown just, actual size. <laughs> that's it's unbelievable that's that you actually did that. I, I did. You guys used to go up there and get drunk before you even thought about doing something like that. Did people go up there and drink that, and stuff? No, no, actually. Um, we drank at home. <laughs> um, <laughs> then, you, then you went and did stuff like that. <laughs> how that how that came about was it was it was it was actually originally it was my idea that all four of us were gonna crucify ourselves on the Hollywood sign. But it ended up being me naturally. Um, <laughs> the thing about it is if you live in LA if you've ever been to LA and you drive down the Hollywood freeway, you see that sign. It's 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 iconic. You know what I mean? You see it, and um, it it's like a magnet. It draws people to the 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 bright lights of fame and fortune. And you know, um, sometimes it taunts you. You know, when you're starving, you have no money, and no record company will come see you. And you feel like a loser. You feel like you're pissing your life away and your family hates you because they think you're a loser. Um, I figured what 
maybe I needed to do to get a record deal in this town was it was a good old fashioned blood sacrifice. So we made that cross to uh, symbolize my uh, sacrifice <laughs> to the rock guy. Man. Yeah, and uh, I heard. You and that's how that sort of came about. I mean, we 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 made the cross, we built it, we carried it up there. It was not by any means the safest thing in the world. It was really <laughs> fucking. I mean, in retrospect, stupid and dangerous, and I could have killed myself. I thought that we I would be up there a half hour before I'd be spotted and taken down but it took a couple of hours for them to finally notice me and so helicopter so, flying up. so think how that feels you're crucified on the hollywood sign and no one gives a shit you know <laughs> you're thinking you're thinking wow nobody you know and then obviously when the helicopters came and the cops and the fire engines and the paramedics and and the news media thinking that i was a suicide jumper and, and yeah. being disappointed when they found out that I wasn't going to kill myself, they were they were bummed. The ratings went um, down. Yeah, we well, saw. they thought it was going to be like Faces of Death. You know? Right. Right. Exactly. And it wasn't. It was just a publicity stunt, and they were pissed off about it. And then the cops came, and the park rain. It, it, it ended up being this, this thing that has lasted, you know, throughout history and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, and now uh, since that stunt they've installed motion sensors and and, and so no one can go up there anymore security now yeah. well just imagine driving down that highway and it's one thing to see somebody maybe i don't know standing somewhere maybe up there on the sign i don't know but then you, but you look up one day and there's a long-haired guy on a cross yeah. hanging off of the y Boom, right there. just right. i mean that, well, that's, were, that's yeah it, it's it's definitely it was a it was a weird and wacky thing that i did but was that between the two albums, or was that before um, Blackout and Red? No, that Red? was that. I originally thought of it in 1987, and I suggested it, just going, you know, maybe we need to to do something crazy to be noticed because you're in a Hollywood at that time. Thousands of people were trying to get records thousands of bands and we all looked the same we all had black hair tattoos we all played les pauls right. you know what i mean and yeah. and that's why i changed my name to jizzy from jim because my name had zero marquee value and and when you're competing against guys that have names like cc deville and nikki six and right. you know what i mean you you, you realize that you have to step up your game a little bit and, and throw a little bit of showbiz into the mix to get noticed. Little did I know that, you know, 40 years later, I'd still have to, you know, wave the jizzy flag. Sure, sure. But, but, uh, you, but you, that tells you you left your mark, too, and that's a good thing. So. Well, anyway, but, but the point of it is, is it, 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 the competition was really fierce back then, and so I thought... Let's do something crazy, you know. Let's 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 crucify ourselves on the sign and and uh, and make a plea to the Almighty Rock God up there. But I ended up doing it in 1992 because we were going to make this underground movie, and and it ended up being the the focal piece of this movie that has ended up in the dustbin of history. But uh, you know, I mean, it was crazy, and uh, I got arrested and. You know, even now, when I apply for TSA pre or something like that, it's on my record. Oh, trespassing, wow. huh? You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I mean, it, the, the the gift that keeps on giving. You know. <laughs> now, besides your band, did your did, did the record company people know of, of your of your uh, no little plan? No, they didn't. I was curious. If not they only to... did they not know about it, but they fucking didn't dig it at all. Mm. Uh, they didn't dig it at all, but. You know, they're, I mean, this record company has Barbara Streisand and Bruce Springsteen and mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and they had no, they, they didn't know how to market a band like us, you know? Right. And then when Alice in Chains came along, they didn't know how to market a band like them either. But 
and Lane Staley. Well, no, Lane Staley told me this because I was friends with him. He told me that they didn't know what to do with them with Allison Chains. They were just clueless. But Man in the Box was on the radio, and it had 80 record sta ra radio stations, and it wouldn't go away. And so that's what broke them was Man in the Box. And then the record company sort of took credit for that. You know, we did this. Right. But in reality, it was the, it was their it was their fucking music that did it. So while we're hanging on by a thread with this internet connection, we've got to talk more about your books. And I'm going to put these up on the screen. We want everybody to go to jizzypearl.net because you can get uh, all of these books from Jizzy. He did just sell out of I Got More Crickets Than Friends, but you can get the other two books. And I, you know, before we kind of talk a little bit more about the one you sent us, which is Unhappy Endings, tell us you're working on a fourth one now or, or is it completed? It's almost done. Good. It's almost done. It's uh, as yet untitled, but um, it's it's going to be in the same vein. You know okay. what I mean? It's the thing about these books that that you just showed was that I'm not the same person that I was back then. Mm -hmm. I was that guy was more like Attila the Hun or Genghis Khan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or yeah with a little bit of Caligula thrown in for good measure. Mm -hmm. You know, that guy was a fucked up guy that wrote those books. And um, and now here I am on my fourth book and I don't want it to read like a children's book. You know what right. I mean? This guy grew up, he lost his edge. He's <laughs> writing about, you know, the flower children and Kumbaya. No, so it, I, with that in mind, these stories in my fourth book are are uh, they're just as fucked up you know in 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 their own way but uh but i'm just a different person just you know that's how writers are you know your first book it's like it's like a record your first record your second record your third record i've made it's right there oh i look bad hey there we go yeah good. there finally it was one of those bad Freezes. Where they get you looking at me. <laughs> where, where I look like a, I look like Rupert from Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. <laughs> Do you feel like you're happier now? I mean, is that you say you're different now? Are you happier? Oh, definitely happier. Great. I mean, I'm I'm married. I've been married for a while, and I'm you know I'm just not I'm not the same guy that 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 guy back then was was younger and and you know all the adjectives of being a, a rocker on the road applied to that guy. Sure. He drank too much. He fucked too much. He fist fought all the time. He was crazy. He never slept. And so now I'm older and wiser and, and happy that I was able to put down all those experiences in those books, but you know, happy that I'm not that guy now because mm -hmm. that guy now would be a fool you know what i mean can i ask you when you were writing those books did you have to self-censor yourself I and mean, there is there stuff that you wanted to put in those books that you just had to go man fuck i can't put that in there you know i can't say that. i can't anything like that no i think they're really pretty fucking gnarly they are i mean <laughs> it was <laughs> I mean, when I, when I, when I read them over, you know, cause I had to proofread them to, to, to do the reissue, I had to reformat them. And so I had to look at them, you know, and open them up and sort of reread them. And I was, it was shocking even to me, mm. some of the graphic stuff in those books. I mean, just, you know, I wanted to be, I wanted, I'm a big Stephen King fan. I wanted to try and write like Stephen King. I wanted the violence to jump out of the page and grab you by the throat. And I achieved that. I mean, in that story, Unhappy Endings, I mean, it's very, it's stark. Yeah, and, and, um, for sure. And if you're, you know, but I think the audience is, is older and different. And, and, you know, if you watch Black Mirror on Netflix and, you know what I mean? Black Mirror is really dark and crazy. And, and I think that people would appreciate something like that, you know as a writer 
you know, I certainly would. I, it's not your normal rock book. It's not your normal kind of two-dimensional tell-all. You know what I mean? It's it's real writing. And, it, and if you're interested in that, see, I'm a reader. Mm -hmm. You know, I enjoy reading. I read all the fucking time. So I'm, I'm reaching out to, to people that, that are readers like me and that appreciate it and, you know, aren't glued to the cable TV, you know, 24 hours a day. So, you know, I'm hoping that they go to jizzypearl.net and, and check out, you know, the stuff. When Do you have a projected release date for your fourth book? Uh, probably early next year, maybe okay. January-ish. Okay, great. It's almost done, but... I need a couple of more fucked up stories. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say? To, what does it say about a guy like me that I'm drawn in by chapter one of uh, oh, unhappy endings? Jizzy, I struggled with that, buddy. I'm sorry. That one was tough that's, for me. I thought it was great. <laughs> well, that's that's more suited for the men than for the sure. women. But it's a true fuck. It's a true story. I didn't buy it. For, I, you know, I, I didn't doubt about, that. For about six months, I was a pornographer. I worked for a pornographer so i was sort of a junior journeyman pornographer until i just couldn't stand it anymore because wow. i just you know i'm not when you're in it, it it's almost you know what i mean it, it, it you know you don't realize till you go to the shoots and you're and you're reading the stuff and you're you know what i mean because everyone guys dig porn you know what i mean but it's different when you're there. It's just way it's more. It's not as sexual then. It's more like. It's completely wow. unsexual. Right. It's completely. When you're at the shoots and some guy is banging some chick and it's just unsexual. There's, there's, you, you, you have to, you don't have to worry about getting a heart on because it's just, <laughs> it's not, it's so clinical and weird you know what i mean but what you see on the screen is different from you know so th that's kind of the thing about it is that i sort of explore that whole porn i mean because guy a guy like me has had a hundred different weird jobs because i don't want to have a day job so when someone says hey will you go drive strippers around and make good money i'll go sure you know because i don't because it's not a day job and right. and so th that's in the that's in the book too. Me driving strippers around at right. five in the morning, and mm -hmm. you know, being chased by crackheads and and knife wielding thugs, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just that's what rockers do or did back in the day to make a living. You know what I mean? Wow. Sure. So Incredible. your your fourth book is coming out, and you, you recently kind of described as Quiet Riot as, I mean, maybe. You, know, you just say it's just a gig. I, I, I mean, well, when I say, let me, let me, let me preface okay. that. That's fine. I don't because it is just a gig, but it, it's more than that. I mean, I take it totally seriously. I'm totally lucky to be singing in Quiet Riot because mm -hmm. it's a really good gig. I mean, I talked about it in this interview I did before. Having a song like Come On, Feel The Noise, I mean, you can poo-poo that, but my optometrist can sing that song. Mm -hmm. You know, Eskimos in the Arctic with their with their tridents <laughs> can sing that song, you know? Uh, and, and I've been in a bunch of different bands, some famous and some not so famous. And I recognize the power of having a song like that and mental health and yeah. Mama, we're all crazy now. Yeah, yeah. So, so when I, it's maybe I didn't speak it correctly when I said it's just a gig, sure. because the reason I said it's just a gig, meaning that I'm a hired guy in Quiet Riot. I'm not Kevin Dubrow, you know what I mean? And I don't think I'm Kevin Dubrow, and so I'm not putting on airs. Mm -hmm. like it's my band i'm lucky to be in the band and playing in the band you know but uh so let's just leave it at that before i stick my foot in my mouth no, that, that's fine but what my point was going to be what do you it's feel work. is there something you know else I mean? out there that's yes. the thing when i was in when i was in rat it was work 
I was working. I was making, I was, I was paying bills like everyone else, like everyone else that works a job. It's a great fucking job, but you know, it's, it's about kicking out that rent and not, you know, sleeping on people's couches and, and being a man and, and taking responsibility for, for, you know, yeah, for totally your life. get it. When, when I when I brought that up, I'm I was trying to get to a point of is there something, a goal that you're still striving for? Is there something that you feel is still out there for Jizzy Pearl to 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 be a, a higher plateau than where you are right now? It's, you know, the hardest thing, especially these days. COVID has shown us that, um, and I and I said this again in an interview, my, my metaphor of the apple tree. Guys like me throughout the years have always been able to, when they needed money, to go to the apple tree and pick a few apples. You could always scrounge a couple of gigs to keep the lights on, to work, to support yourself. Yeah. But then came COVID and the apple tree was taken away. Right. And uh, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do if you're a guy like me? You know what I mean? It's just, uh, it, it makes you re-examine that maybe you should diversify. Maybe you should have a couple of irons in the fire and stuff like that. Sure. So having a great gig is great. You know, it's cool. And um, I'm hoping that that I'm able to continue on, you know what I mean? And not get struck by lightning or or anything like that you know my fourth book is going to come out and i'm going to do as much as i can creatively uh, i have a record coming out on golden robot records uh next february cool uh awesome. full-length record wow. you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i'm always doing stuff writing recording um singing performing you know what i mean so it, there isn't any specific goal that I'm looking for because I've pretty much done it all. I mean, you know, the only, so, so I, I've, I've played stadiums. I've been on MTV. I've done it all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so there isn't anything that I can look at and go, Oh, you know, I really want to play with blah, 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 you know? So for me, it's just, I just want to continue doing what I do and keeping up a sort of standard of excellence uh, that I think I have with the singing and the writing and the, and the you know, so yeah. that's that's all. Sure. Well, that's sure. cool. I have one last question for you, and, this, and the answer might be fairly simplistic, but I just, I like you and I like your attitude. What do, how do you deal with criticism? And, and this can be, you know, I'm asking this about you, but this can be advice that the rest of us can apply in our lives as well. How do you deal with the criticism you get for the simple fact that you're not the original guy? You know, never mind the fact that you're great, but how do you deal with that? But none of them are the original guy. I know, guy. I know, thing. but I want to know Jizzy's answer. Um, well, once you recognize that you're not the original guy and it's 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 not personal that then you can just kind of let it go right you know when i was in rat obviously stephen piercy is the 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 guy and him and i have stayed friends because when i was in rat and he wasn't he never talked shit about me mm-hmm. and i never talked shit about him so i mean i just saw him last weekend you know we're friends we we stay in touch you know because he knows that i jumped into his gig because it was a gig not because i thought that i could outdo stephen piercy because i can't and i and and once you realize that it takes a load off you know what i mean that's when i say oh i i'm not kevin dubrow i'm not trying to be kevin dubrow because there is only one kevin dubrow and there is only one Frankie Benelli, you know what right, I mean? Right. And that's just, that's how it is. So well, there's if even you guys go like... into it, well, if you go into it with that frame of mind, then, you know, when people on the internet talk shit, as they always do, you know, you just don't take it personal. I mean, I just, people have been talking shit about me, you know, 
since I was a young boy. Right. <laughs> it happens. Any yeah. any level of success, you're going to get nailed by those do who don't have it. So yeah. Props, props so I mean, you me. just that's you just have to have a a, a a a good head on your shoulders, and you just can't take shit personally. I, I learned <laughs> long ago as a musician that any attention is good attention. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, if I they're mean, gonna talk you know, shit, they at least they noticed you enough to talk shit about you. So Hey man, gigs are hard to find. I mean, trust me, and sure. I've I've been in this business for over thirty years and gigs are hard to find and and paying gigs are hard to find and good gigs are hard to find. You know, so you just have to as a musician, count your blessings. Yes. You know what I mean? Don't 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 shit on what you have. Right. You know what I mean? Sure. Because it can be taken away. For sure, man. Absolutely. Great and attitude. and you know the thing about it too is the fans can be like so fickle. I mean, look at the the case of Motley Crue and John Karabi. They made some really great music, but you and he and he's a better singer than Vince Neil, and yet people want Vince Neil because he's I know, because well, because he's not Vince Neil. And right. And right. it's just right. it's just that's just the fucking way it is. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Again, we want people to go visit your website. I'm going to put it up here on the screen one more time. Go to jizzypearl.net. Pick up a book from Jizzy. He's, he's sold out of the, the first one, but the other two are still available. He's got a fourth one coming out. We really admire you and, and your history and your, your talent and your, your writing is amazing. Absolutely. It, it really is. I need to read those other two books because, <laughs> seriously, I read, the, I, I, I read Unhappy Endings for the second time today. Yes. And I don't know if I don't know if you're ready for angst for the memories. I don't know. Are you spiritually ready? Oh wow. Because wow. that is one's that one's the worst one of all. Is that it really? He says he calls it the worst one. <laughs> when he says the worst one, he means probably like the best one. The one I want. The one I want. The one I want. To, I want to get next. He's going to well, be up all night reading it now. The darkest one. The oh, one geez, that deals. Man. The one that deals more with. Um, the Hollywood, the 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 girls, the drugs, the booze. It's if you're a musician, yeah, that one would be more up your alley because because that one just has way more insider stuff. You know what I mean? As far as uh, I've had girls throw that book at me because wow. because they didn't like what was said in it. And maybe they thought they I was talking about them, and of course I wasn't. Oh man! Yeah, you know, but sure. but but just a, the the whole genre. <laughs> was, no, that sounds like was, that sounds was in like danger. The, the whole yeah. genre was in danger. <laughs> well, listen, please stay in touch with us. We're, we are here as a platform to help you guys get your word out about your efforts. And, yeah. you know, I know a lot of times we do these interviews and then everybody moves on. But seriously, just keep our email uh, in your list there. Let us know when your fourth book comes out yeah. so we can start helping. And we get a lot. That. We get a lot of people who watch the replay and all that stuff. You know, they got shit they're doing and they come on and watch it and. And hopefully we'll have over, you know, 2,000 views in a couple of days. So, um, you know, any attention that comes to you and, and to your website and all that, you know, that's just this the way we like that like to have it. Definitely. Well, hey, cool. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate that you guys, you know, read the book and, and, and had that, had that um, you know, that's you did your homework. We're, did. We're, of this, we're of the same ilk, man. Yeah. We are. I, I you know what I mean? I haven't listened to Love Hate so much in the last two weeks <laughs> than I have. And it's great. It's amazing. It's still great. It's, still gr it's a great album, the first album. And, and the second album, Wasted uh, America. I have, I have it right here. Let me put it that, up. That, boom, right you there. You know, you, you talk about, and I'm going to say one more thing. You talk about, you know, people, you know, watching too much TV. You know, when you wrote that, you know, people were watching a lot of TV. But now we have the internet and cell phones and all these video games so it's like it's almost like your song is like times a hundred now you know <laughs> it's creepy it's it a, it's, it's a creepy t it's a creepy time when someone could be on their phone and walk off a cliff i mean <laughs> right. it's just <laughs> you know what i mean it, <laughs> right it's, yes we do it's who'd have thought that we would be in you know minority report you know real life it's yeah crazy stuff Thank you, Jizzy. We hope you have a great night. Thanks for joining us here on Tulsa Music Stream. Stay in touch with us if you would. Thank Stay you Hollywood. Guys. Stay interview. Hollywood, Thank Jizzy. You. Thank All you, right. Jizzy. Have a good night. Take care, buddy.
Awesome. All right. Yeah. Good stuff. Cool guy. We do apologize for the internet issues. I think I think typically the way these things work is when you watch the replay, I don't think it'll skip on the replay. Hopefully I'm correct about that. But uh, darn, that hasn't happened to us in forever. So. Yeah, we, we haven't had anything like that in probably six, seven, maybe <sighs> eight episodes or so. Yeah, I know. And oh. and now we're going to we've, – we've been going pretty good here for a little bit. Are you guys uh, – let's get a hold of Doug real quick. Let's and do it. Let, me, let me get his meeting going. Yeah, and push yes. the transcript button if you could. One second. We'll get, we'll get Doug dialed good. up here. Dun, 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 dun. He, he was a really it, nice guy, it. too, man. Yeah, um, man. Most of them have been really nice guys, man. You know, there's, there's um, you know, th- when it comes down to it at the end of your life, it's going to be about the way you treated people. So Definitely. You know. Anyway, um, a lot of people in the chat room, Debbie Cook and Kenneth Young and Jason Fritz and Tim Hewitt and yeah. Travis Oles. No, Travis Souls. Um, Travis Tri- Souls. Travis Souls. But, um, yep. yeah, Jizzy Pearl, man, he's got a lot of stories, man. He could probably write five or six books, you know, and uh, and uh, they'd all be pretty interesting. So I'm looking forward to reading that next one. Yeah, absolutely. About the CD Hollywood. And we also we have tickets to give away for the upcoming right. Sebastian Bach, we do. Stephen Piercy, Phil Lewis show, and um, we'll we'll be down there. We're going to bring a camera and stuff and document some some people and and um, just kind of get a kind of a cool vibe and and put it put together a little cool show for you guys and uh, throw it out there. So hopefully we can get some really cool some cool images and some some good cries. Yeah. Tears. Yeah. Oh, we don't, oh, that's maybe so maybe we'll get lucky and we'll talk to a rock star like Steve McCabe or something. That'd be cool. Or you know, right? I don't know. I'm just watching the room for Doug to come in. We'll be having Doug Burgess on here momentarily. Uh, Phone number for call in is what Scott Squires eight one two no 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 seven, no no nine, five, no. Six. But no, we got, no, they got to have it ready, no, don't they? He d- yeah, he doesn't even know our number. Don't you sing that song in your head every night before you go to bed? Seven one six. I mean, I'll put it up on the screen here now. Um, there's Doug. Doug. All right, let me get him in here. Damn. Got the desktop Damn. audio. Okay, let me get him yeah. on screen. Hey, Doug, hold on one second. Okay. Bam. There's the man. There he is. Can you hear us okay? I got you. Gotcha. What's awesome. up, Doug? How you doing? How are you? Hello, hey, Doug. How are you guys? Good, good. good. Great. Well, July 24th is the night, man. And I know you probably have been real busy gearing up for this and talking with all the people you got involved in what's it been like the last week or so hectic <laughs> <laughs> Tying up anytime sebastian bach is on a bill it's gonna be hectic <laughs> yeah i can imagine so we did like, have some questions like, man uh, and we didn't we kind of didn't know how to answer them but we think we know <laughs> phil lewis is singing also he's not just coming to hang out right he's doing both he, he's going to uh, perform a few songs and um uh, Cool. I'm going to be hanging out with, with uh, fans also. Got to fix is, my hair. It looks great. Yeah. you got your summer <laughs> do going. Well, why don't you share with us? Let me put up the flyer. We we know this show is just about sold out. So make sure you get your tickets at stubwire.com. Or if you want to pay $5 more, you can get them at the door. But this show is about sold out. And, again, this this is Eddie Trunk's birthday bash. And, we're, and it features Stephen Piercy, Sebastian Bach, and then this all-star band, uh, Michael Devon from White Snake, Glenn Sobel from Alice Cooper, and Brent Woods from Sebastian Bach, and just added to the show, Phil Lewis. Please make sure you join us. Why don't you share with us real quick, give us like two or three of your absolute favorite DEB concert memories at the Ideal Ballroom. Tom Kiefer. Definitely. You know, everybody knows I'm a big, big Tom Kiefer fan, and, and the first time I booked him, um, I was like a little girl. <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> it was it was pretty cool until my wife stole my thunder. I'm I'm running around doing things, and I look over, and, and my wife is, you know, Laura's talking with Tom Kiefer, stealing my boyfriend. You know, the home wrecker. I can't believe it. it. Was, that, that was a lot of fun. You know, Tom Kiefer, uh, bucket list. Uh, Lita Ford, I booked her a couple times. Bucket mm. list. She's um, 
cool chick. You know, she, she's a good woman. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just found out yesterday um, the Tulsa World was um, is writing a story. You know, in the closing of the IDL. And, wow. And uh, he asked me, you know, how many shows have you guys done since we started doing this? And I had no idea. But Denise Dosting, yeah, she came through. Of course, she knows. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we started doing it February of 2017, wow. and uh, this show this Saturday will be our 25th show. Wow! And and four and a half years. Man, it's been a, it's been fun. You know, it's, it's really nice. cool. You know, it's it's you know the crew, you know the the staff at the IDL and our and our crew is it's a family. You know, uh, when, when we go on to do other shows, it's going to be that group of people. You know, it's going to be you know Tom, Billy, Luke, uh, awesome. Kelly, Lance. Uh, yeah. Denise, uh, Rebecca, Regina, you know, that we're a solid family unit and, uh, wherever we go and, and do, do other shows, that's going to be the crew. That's awesome. So that's I have cool. to ask you, and, and I, we're going to start talking about your outdoor stage here in just a couple seconds, but are you actively seeking a new indoor home for the cold weather months for DEB concerts? Uh, what was the question again? It oh, cut I think, out. Yeah, we're freezing up. So my question was, we're going to talk about your your outdoor stage in just a moment, but are you actively seeking a new indoor home for the cold weather months for DEB concerts? No. <laughs> You're not? No, um, I'm really not. Um, you know, when we started this, I told, uh, you know, it started because I was a sponsor at uh, Streets Gone Wild. And after it was over and you know that out that whole debacle i got with tom green because i didn't know how to book bands and but i wanted to and i asked tom i said hey if, if you will teach me how to book bands then i won't go anywhere else mm-hmm. i won't book bands with anybody but you and so with the ideal closing and tom and angie you know what's happening to them you know they're they're going to take a break. They're going to take a long break and, and figure out what they're going to do. Well, I'm doing, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. You know, I'm not in any hurry to find another indoor venue. We're doing bigger stuff. We have things working with the BOK center. Um, there's two or three shows that, that we're working on uh, with those guys um, uh, looking at outdoor shows. Um, so no, not really. Um, t- Tom and Angie are taking a break and I'm going to, I'm going to do it right along with them. You know, I've got Rocklahoma coming up. That's mm-hmm. a, and yeah, that's a handful. Uh-huh. And yeah. gosh, you guys know that it's got, hell. You, you're not right after that for a couple of weeks, you know? Right. So no, I'm not in any hurry to, uh, to jump back into uh, another venue and, and, and do all that. No. Nope. But if the right situation came along down the line, it's, you're not saying you're totally opposed to it. It's just not, it's not on the front burner at this point. right? No, no, it's not at all. Um, these shows you know it's kind of a love hate thing mm-hmm. I, lo- I love doing these shows but they're a hell of a lot of work yes you know they yes. really are uh you know sebastian and steven great artists uh upper echelon of the 80s you know uh singers but uh, some people can be a handful mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know sure. um and you got to get details together and 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 make sure everything is is right for you know certain people to have the right attitude when they come in the door and it's 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 a lot of work but but we have a good crew you know we have professionals and that's you know that that's a good thing but it's 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 a lot of work and it's hectic and it's stressful I get you know, it, know after you know once i'm good once the show starts mm-hmm. i mean once i hand the the, the microphone to eddie trunk <laughs> I'm Game good. Over. It's like it, it's like the anxiety of <laughs> flying commercial. You know, right. as soon as I get past as soon as I get past TSA and the <laughs> security, I'm fine. <laughs> Same thing with the with the uh, with with the show. As soon as I hand the, the microphone to Eddie, and the show starts, then then I, I let my hair down. But it's right. uh, you know f- for a week. This week is is it starts. Hectic. Yeah, last weekend. It starts last, and, and every day it's, there's more and more and more to do every single day. And, you know, people want things from you. Oh, sure. you know, a, lot, a lot of people are, are right. asking for things, but they're not getting it. Sure. <laughs> let's, hey, you know, let's, 
Well, um, I, you you mentioned Tom Kiefer as one of your your favorite ones to to bring to the IDL, and just recently, you know, the news hit about you know Cinderella's guitar player passing away, and I, I probably you probably were a huge Cinderella fan like I was as well. Um, do you think? And, and I know there were some issues between them two of why Cinderella wasn't you know doing anything. Do you have any feeling in your in your heart that maybe now Cinderella may continue, or or do you think it'll nope. still be down? Nope. This mm. this just sealed the deal. Okay. This just sealed it because um, um, Jeff, you know, um, Jeff was the reason why Tom left. Right. Yeah. And and Tom always said if there was ever going to be a reunion, it would only be the original four guys, period. And and now it's, I would, no, it's a, there's no reunion. You can't have a reunion when one of the guys, you know, they're no longer with you, you know, they're no longer here. So no, absolutely not. I don't think Tom was ever considering, I mean, they've Tom has turned down hundreds of thousands of dollars to reunite mm. and uh him and fred have talked about it before and they and neither one of them wanted to do it they turned down a lot of money for for a reunion tour yeah so Jeez. no i don't think so at all no way let's talk about this i'm gonna put this up on screen i hope we're not freezing up on you we've been having trouble all night look at this bad boy it's beautiful so this is your new outdoor stage and i'm I, this must be what you're talking about when you say the family is staying together and going to do shows <laughs> on this bad boy so kind of give us uh, just sort of a bird's eye view like what you're planning on <coughs> this outdoor stage first of all i want to give props to uh, rodney and and uh gary and those guys at quality signs um for doing that doing that rap um uh, rodney i don't I, I don't know his last name but he's a keyboard player musician uh, rodney, rodney uh davis is it davis uh we know, uh, who, you're I know who you're talking about, about. yeah yeah and, and gary ward you know peewee yeah he yeah. works for, for rodney uh those guys did that rap and they did a hell of a job it, it looks great um yeah. i purchased that stage um I purchased it used uh, in November, last November, when, when uh, you know, COVID was was in full force and the music industry was shut down. I, I just figured that was a good time to, to buy, mm -hmm. you know, while everybody else was was selling. I mean, um, you know, uh, was nobody else was buying. Right. What I'm trying to say, and so I I bought the stage at the right time. Because you can't find them now. There's, you know, every, everything's open back up. Yeah, I got it back in, in November, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a mobile stage. It's a stage line, uh, 250. It's uh, it's you know 24 by 32. It opens up to a 24 foot by 32 foot, wow. and I have a bunch of stage decks where I can open it up to like 32 by 50 something feet. Wow. You know, yeah, it's a, it's a big dude, hmm. and. Uh, you know, we can accommodate, you know, big bands. And that's why, why I bought it. So we could do, uh, you know, whenever I bought it, we had no idea what was going to happen to the ideal ballroom. Mm -hmm. It was just another step. Right. You know, yeah, we can do the club dates. Yeah. And, you know, Tom and I have always been wanting to do bigger things, um, bigger shows, you know, Megadeth, um, Anthrax, wow. And, wow. you know, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Uh, and this was a way to do it. We, you got to have you have have to have bigger stage. You have to have bigger production. You have to have bigger everything. And that this is this, this is why I purchased it. That's excellent. Cool. Well, everyone's looking forward to it, and uh, you know, everyone for sure don't want to see you stop doing. Nope. No, man. Doing you this get, I mean, I mean, this is yeah. something that we just love and, and enjoy. And you know, you you become a fixture here in Tulsa, big time, especially in the, the rock and you know scene here and so everyone appreciates you and i know you a lot of people are probably you know pulling you so many different ways but you know we all do appreciate you and all your hard yes. work and we know you probably got a lot on your plate and and but you know you seem to be pulling a lot of this stuff off but you know we definitely want to say that we appreciate everything you do for sure oh well, well thanks thanks for that uh one more thing on the stage you know i sponsor and produce you know 
the uh, the uh, DEB concert stage at Rockahoma, that stage there is going to be the stage at Rockahoma. Is that right? So, so yeah. So now you know. Whenever I say, "Hey, it's my stage," well, it really is my stage. <laughs> right. <laughs> Literally, it's your stage. It has your name on it. That is, and super it will stay cool. there for Born and Raised also. So that's part of the, my sponsorship for those two festivals. I am sponsoring Born and Raised also. Nice. And that will be a side stage for them also. That's cool. Right. So you'll have a stage, a bus, and a golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like you. Sounds like you got Trifecta, it all. Trifecta, baby. You, you're doing <laughs> it. A, doing it right. Yeah. That's wonderful. I think you I'm got set a, up pretty good. You are. <laughs> yeah. So you got a lot of cool bands there at um, at Rocklahoma, and um, probably one of my favorites is you know all all the '80s stuff that you bring is is always so cool. Mm-hmm. But you know, Mark Torrey and and all those guys and and just all the see who you got John Five as well. So you know mm-hmm. he's not '80s, but he might as well be. He's awesome. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, George Lynch. Um, George Lynch. Stephen Piercy again. Yeah. Uh, he's he's playing uh, DMS. Mm-hmm. Yep, he's bringing uh, his Lily solo Act. band. Do what? Uh, Stephen's bringing this his solo band. Right. Yeah. It's gonna be awesome. Well, yeah, man, rats still not together. The uh, the dysfunctional <laughs> right. family. What a bummer. <laughs> well, we really appreciate you, Doug. We wanted to just get caught up with you tonight and bring you on and get some thoughts on this Saturday show let me put that flyer up one more time guys make sure you grab your tickets you do not want to miss this very special it's going to be a very bittersweet night but we are going to have some fun doors at eight go ahead buddy I'm sorry Uh, let me make a couple of uh, announcements on that yeah you know it's a promoter trick when uh when they say hey it's almost sold out you better get your tickets (laughs) I'm not I'm not lying. We only had like 40 tickets left Ooh. before it's sold out. Good. 40. So we're not good. 40. We only have 40 tickets left before it's sold out. We're not BSing. It's going to be a packed house. Wow. Um, a couple of things for everybody to to uh, to sink in for this show. Um, during the day, sound check. The club's going to be locked. We're going to have security guards outside. No one's getting in. It's it's going to be very tight. Uh, only the crew and staff of the IDL are going to be inside for the for the uh, for the sound check, and nobody's getting getting in the green room. I don't care who you are, friend of the band. Nah, I don't see it happening. Um, it's it's going to be very tight. There's a member uh, of this band who um, has some health issues, mm. and um, we have to keep the green the green room locked down. Sure. It's a uh, and uh, as I told you guys, and Lynn Hernandez, and and all my other podcasts that I sponsor, no interviews, <laughs> no, no Sebastian Bach, no no Stephen Piercy interviews. Maybe Phil Lewis. Yeah. Phil Lewis mm-hmm. may be available. I'm not sure. We're talking about that right now. Yeah, um, we, but this we, is a really tight knit show. Um, the, the artists don't want don't want to be bothered. You know, they're they're, they're flying yeah. in. They're, they're grabbing my money and they're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we, basically, you know, with us, we'll probably do a lot of interviews with the crowd. Yes, and you know, and, and you know, have them tell their memories of of the concerts and stuff like that, and you know, get a good shot of the line. You know, waiting to get in the doors, and you know, and if if a guy comes outside to have a cigarette, or you know, we did talk, we did reach out to Phil, and he said he would be interested, or he'd be glad to. You know, do a one a little hello thing, whatever. If he comes outside, something like that. So that's basically what we'll, we. He will be the most accommodating, you yeah, know, because yeah. he, uh, you know, he's uh, he's not a handful. Nah. <laughs> right. He's, he's a cool dude. We sure like yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pre- he's pretty cool. He, he's pretty laid, you know, and that's part of the reason why he's coming. Um, you know, I talked to him about it. You know, will you hang out in the crowd? He, and he will be hanging out in the crowd. You know, taking pictures with people and uh, and signing things and stuff like that he's going to be very accommodating the yes. other two not yeah, so much it's okay man <laughs> yeah. we can we can watch their videos and watch their what live performance that night and that'll be that'll be good enough this, i only have i only have one request for you before we let you go and i've been making a joke about this but it's not really a joke can someone just cut off a tiny piece of the stage for me I, i'd like to keep it you know, when Ideal shuts down, I'd like to have that little, just a little piece of the stage. That's not a problem, is it? Well, with, <laughs> with, with Tom's attitude right now toward 
the new owners. He may give you the whole damn thing. Hell yeah. <laughs> we can put it in our backyard. I like it. I just want some you of know, that one, gum that stuck to it. You know, a cool thing that the Canes Ballroom did with their floor, um, they, they, they took up the floor. And my brother-in-law uh, made some wooden pens, you know, wow. uh, ink pens out of the floor. And I have a few of them. I believe um, Jack, Jack White has a guitar made out of the floor of Canes Ballroom. The, oh, really? the, the white stripes wow. guitar player yeah that's so cool mm -hmm. yeah my brother-in-law steven he made several of them and uh i gave one to eddie trump tom has one he doesn't know where it is trust me <laughs> that's um, cool. <laughs> I, I, one important one one important note i haven't uh put this out uh in the in public uh michael Devin, the bass player is not going to make it to the show he's been replaced by robbie crane uh is that bass right? player well, there you have uh, it that's what yeah. Eddie Trunk was talking about the uh, other day. Ah, breaking he news. He said that there was a, yeah. a, a slight change in the uh, lineup. But he yeah, said Michael he, Devin is not He's not on the bill. It would be Robbie Crane. He's played for Rat. He's played for, yeah. Yeah. gosh, everybody, you know. Um, oh. um, but, you know, it's a bass player. Yeah. They only play with the top two strings hey, anyway. So, hey, is watch that right? it, so, watch so, it, watch <laughs> it, watch does, it. Does this, did the band just have to, like, learn a bunch of Rat and um, – uh, Skid Row songs, this sort of thing, or are they just going to be doing a bunch of covers? How, I mean, how, no, how's this being? They're doing, you know, S Sebastian's doing his hits. Steven's going to be doing his hits, and uh, they're going to be, uh, and Phil is going to do some LA, LA Gun songs, and they're going to do an all start. You know, they're going to, they're all going to get together and do some covers, some real fun stuff, maybe some Zeppelin, you know, stuff like that at the end of the night. It's going to be. A party. Guys, I'm telling you, this is the, the Tulsa party of the year. I've awesome. got my hotel room. Ooh. All my friends have their hotel room. I'm telling you, you're gonna be you're gonna be a drunk ass. You better <laughs> get a hotel room or Uber because I'm telling you, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. Um, I'm already I'm already buying the wine for uh, for Sebastian. Oh, you know, Lord. and and he he's a big boy. He drinks a lot of wine. <laughs> It's going to be a lot of fun. We totally 40 appreciate it. 40 tickets. 40 tickets is 40 all we have left. left. 40 are left, guys. You heard it here first. Get your tickets at stubwire.com one more time. Hey, and we, you know what? Let's go ahead. Why we got Doug on here? We're going to give away two two free tickets. Well, does Doug need to go? I don't do know. you he need can to hang out? Do you need to go? Do you have to potty or anything? I have such a busy life, you know. I'm sitting here drinking wine. As soon as I get off of here, I'm going back to the pool right okay. out, right out uh, the door. There must, must be well, hard. I, I'm, a, I'm hoping. I'm in my swimming trunks right now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm hoping that we get a call. We want people to call in. I, I do need. To, I'm going to put the screen up here, guys, so you can see. Uh, as soon as I find it, bear with me. We're going to do a ticket giveaway. Scott, do you have that? Um, do you have that pulled up? Yeah. That question. God, where is our scene? I'm looking. Well, here it is. Here it is. Right here. See this call-in number, guys? Okay, so 918-512-1709. You're going to have to call in to that number to win. And and it's actually, I remember the question. Can I go ahead and ask it? Sure. Go ahead. First person to call in wins a pair of tickets, free tickets, courtesy of Marty Overby of Tulsa Band's Bulletin Board. Here is your trivia question to win the pair of tickets. Who was the singer of Skid Row? at Rocklahoma 2007. I know, I know, I know. I know, I, I know I, you oh, know. Oh, oh, it was oh, the first Rocklahoma, not the one in Norman that doesn't count, but the one in... I was at that one, too. Were you? Yeah. Right. Braggart. That's okay. So, Doug knows... You weren't even born yet. <laughs> who, sang, who sang for Skid Row at Rocklahoma 2007? And we need you guys to call the 918-512-1709. Don't leave us hanging. I need to remember there's a delay. So, so Google that if you need to. Who sang for Skid Row at Rocklahoma in 2007? Yep. And if you already got tickets, you can probably still win these and give them to some friends. And if we don't get a call fairly soon, then we'll just take the first answer in the chat room. But I want people to try to call. Hmm. 918-512-1709. Who sang for Skid Row in 2007 at Rocklahoma? I hear that, doesn't it? I hear that. I hear that. Wow, no one's listening to your They're podcast. Not. They're not. <laughs> well, we've been having... I don't. Cox sent me an email, and they said, we're going to be doing work in your area over the next two weeks. Apparently, they decided to do it tonight. So we've had kind of an unstable connection, but uh, anyway... Does anyone want tickets? I, I always worry about this. Yeah. 918-512-1709.
who sang for Skid Row at Rocklahoma in 2007. I say the first person in the chat room. Yeah, let's just go with that, and then we can leave Doug up on the screen. First person in the chat Let's get out of here, y'all. Yeah, thanks, Jizzy Pearl. Thank you, man. Y'all take care. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. See you guys Saturday at Ideal Ballroom. Appreciate you much. <laughs> Yeah.